This is Three Sisters Circuit, and every single time our team have been to this place, it has absolutely refused to give us a break. The first time we came here, our pit strategy had us running in the podium standings right up until we came in for a fuel stop and they momentarily ran out of fuel somehow. The second time we came here, we were given a car which treated steering like a vague suggestion. And the most recent trip here was, to put it bluntly, an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> Welcome back to Perico Karting. And in this video, we experience every single stage of grief at once in the span of a single endurance race. Now, if you've seen the last video, which you better have, the format for this event is a two hour long race, three mandatory stops, one fuel up, and all of the drivers on a team have to participate. Our team is composed of myself, John, and the sleep paralysis demon of Fastlane. The last time we came here, John started the race, and that seemed to work out well for us, but in the interest of trying to get me some decent footage, I volunteered to start the race this time. But first, we'd have to qualify, and this is where we were met with our first obstacle. This cart sucked. We were each about two and a half seconds off of our usual pace trying to drive this thing. It was slow on the Conrod straight. Steering felt more like a side effect of turning the wheel rather than the intended outcome. And despite all of our best efforts combined, we would only qualify P17 out of 20, with a 52.7 set by Luke. I do not need to explain why this is not right. Alas, there's nothing more I can do at the moment than take my spot on the grid and hope that a good old fashioned grid start will do me any good. So let's get this underway. And the light goes green and let's go racing. Now the guy in the white helmet apparently didn't get the memo, which means I immediately overtake him, jump him off the line, which means I'm now up to P16. What an illustrious position to find myself in. As the pack comes barreling around the first of the S's and onto the Rogerson straight, it's now my responsibility to try and keep up with absolutely anyone in the hopes I can gain a slipstream coming down the Comrade straight. I try and hold the inside line on this corner because I perceive that to be the racing line. It might not be, however, because I'm struggling to keep up with anyone here. Everyone's sort of disappearing into the distance. Straight line speed is where this car in particular is definitely suffering. I'm in this guy's slipstream, but I'm getting absolutely absolutely nothing from it. But he's gone wide here through the second part of the S's, which means I'm absolutely going to get a run on him coming to Joey Dunlop, which is the final corner, which is a hairpin. So as long as I hold the inside line, I can absolutely overtake. He's on my outside, so I make sure that I follow it through. I'm almost kind of forcing him off the track here, so I move a little bit to the right to make sure I don't, but I'm ahead. So that means I'm now up to P15 just on the opening lap alone. But because I was trying to defend my newly overtaken position, I have just lost a lot of speed, a lot of traction. I'm currently surfing the curb right there and now watch me through the lunar bend try and make this cart turn that is full lock to the right and this cart's still skidding to the left it was atrocious it almost distracted me from the fact that the guy ahead of me actually went off into the grass so i do a bit of human drs in hopes of being able to catch up to the guy but even after going off the track he was still able to get more straight line speed than me and i'm not at all able to gain on him going through the s's yet again and coming towards joey dunlop i can't exactly catch him under braking but i'm trying to remember my lines the best i can now my entry and exit point through this corner is scuffed for the first stint but i will learn my lesson but I've done such a bad job that the guy I overtook on the first lap is now trying to battle past me. So it's now absolutely up to me to see if I can hold this position in front of this guy. Although I do believe he is about to overtake me because my lines are wrong and this cart is about as quick as my thinking process. Again, full lock to the right and I'm still getting absolutely nothing. I'm letting off the throttle, losing way too much speed, just trying to get this thing to turn. Here I come sailing down the Conrod straight one more time. I'm pretty sure the cart 17 is right on my bumper at this point because why wouldn't he be? I'm messing up my lines. He's got all the slipstream in the world. He's just waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike. I, however, am just trying to get this thing to move, but it is getting really disheartening watching all these people disappear into the distance. Again, my entry and exit through this corner is just diabolical, but I'm doing the best I can, to be honest. 
and side by side with me here he's on the inside so i close him off but he's still got the bumper in which messes up my entry coming into this corner i lose a lot of speed yet again he's probably going to find his way through it's just a matter of time I'm in a high stakes battle for P15 here, which I have to yield to the guy who actually missed the start. Actually, this was the guy who got the really slow starts. I jumped him on the line. And what's the most telling is I'm right on his bumper here. I'm not getting any slipstream. I'm not increasing in speed being behind him. In a car that isn't suffering in straight line speed, we would be touching bumpers by the end of this corner. But that's just not to be in this thing. And I think my team know because they are going to pull me into the pits eventually. After numerous laps of watching this guy disappear into the distance ahead of me, it was at least slightly heartening to know that even in this cart, I wasn't the slowest person out on track. I get past this person through the lunar bend nice and easily, but I'm still really struggling to get the cart past that corner. So my team make the decision to cut my stint 10 minutes short and pull me back into the pit so that we can actually have a cart change. And that means we'll be having a driver change just to get one of the driver changes out of the way. Behind me is John in the new cart we've been allocated, ready to go out onto the track, so I'm going to hop out of this cart here and have a chat with Luke and his dad about how terrible this cart was. Yeah. Too slow down the straight. It's not just that. It un all, all three of you are two seconds a lap slower than you normally are. It understeers like a through there. Yeah, the start was good. I managed to gain like one position Same. and then lost it again. Yeah. <laughs> The cart's a bag of shit, mate. I, I, I did the best I could, but it, it doesn't like that last corner, I'll tell you that. So, it's been a whole 10 minutes, and the team has made the decision to basically Karen our way into getting a new cart, because this one apparently has the power of an electric toothbrush, which means my stint was cut short, and I'm now going to be racing the final half hour instead. You might notice that I didn't record any B-roll footage during this race, and that would be because I was too busy watching John and Luke absolutely bulldoze their way back through the field with this new cart, with Luke recovering all the way to third. Absolutely unreal. I was too busy chewing my fingernails to the knob in the pits, dreading my stint and the prospect of throwing away all their hard work. But I couldn't put this fate aside for long, and Luke's finally poured into the pits. So, it's my turn now. So the first thing I want to compare when I pull out of the pits is how much better this new cart is. Oh, this one's much better to drive! Yes! Unfortunately, this new cart isn't stopping me from making dumb mistakes, like essentially power sliding through Joey Dunlop because I haven't got the braking point right, but I was so concerned about undoing Luke's hard work that I spent a good deal of time while I was still in the pits looking up hot laps, trying to get every single braking zone and every single racing line as correct as I could. And it really did pay off because my laps got cleaner and cleaner and cleaner as time went on, which really contributed to me holding onto the position as long as I possibly could. Curiously, a few laps into my stint, I get overtaken by this gentleman on the inside here in quite a cool looking race suit. He looks behind me and then gives me a signal to say, let's work together. I immediately get a draft, ignore what he was saying and go for the move, and I doubt he's happy about that one. But I get some understeer coming through the S's and he gives me the signal again, so I decide to drop back a bit and get into his slipstream because Turns out what's actually happening here is I've fallen victim to the oh god he's got some kit complex, which is the exact reason I bought a race suit in the first place, which was to intimidate newer people. So I decided to stick to the bumper of this guy because I assumed, hey, if I'm able to keep up with him, maybe I can use him as a scythe to get through the traffic and use his slipstream in order to keep a decent speed and hold on to the position that Luke has worked his bollocks off for. I realize I'm compromising his line here, so I slow down so he can still get a good entry through this corner but there's still that part of me that just wants to overtake him wants to get by and he can see that and because all he wants to do is for me to work with him he's starting to get a little bit annoyed by this he gets a little bit of oversteer coming through this corner so again i'm getting a sniff on him so he's just tapping the back of his helmet trying to get me to work with him even though i apparently have a little bit more pace than him i know i drop back a bit here that's because i'm trying to give him some room because again we are working together but Look at how much I gain on him coming through this straight. 
My cart just seems to be so much faster than his, and all I want to do is overtake. He's getting more and more frustrated that I won't work with him, and it turns out what he actually wants me to do is not follow him through so I can capitalize on his slipstream. He's actually hoping for a couple of bump drafts so that he can get some more speed down the straights, because he's actually a lap behind me, and me trying to race him here is slowing us both down. I didn't know this, so instead I just ended up fighting someone who was trying to help me and was frantically asking for help for half the race. <laughs> Eventually, though, I just get kind of bored and I start trying to overtake him. So we're coming side by side down the Conrad straight. I have the inside line coming through this corner, but he gets a much better exit than I do. Again, though, I'm still going to make an attack, even though he's quite annoyed by this. So as we're on the approach to Joey Dunlop, he gets a lot of understeer. So I just find the gap and immediately on the pit straight, we're side by side once again. This is where I'm going to try and make the move and lock him out. I'm just ignoring him at this point because I feel bad, but I just want to get by because I've clearly got more pace, even if he's trying to help me. So I secure the overtake and I carry on my merry way. At some point though, I start losing confidence in my line. So after getting a terrible exit out of the Lunar Bend, I let him straight through again. And he gladly capitalizes on that opportunity, still a little bit miffed with me. He starts glancing around, he looks at me and notices something. He points to the underside of his chin and I'm not thoroughly sure what he means by that but I'm sure it's fine, whatever that signal meant. I'm sure it's something I don't really understand, but isn't really going to impact my race in any meaningful way. Words cannot describe how disappointed and irritated I am with myself, this helmet, everything, the universe. Currently sat in this cart, watching all the hard work that Luke and John put in, thrown away because of something as simple as my helmet strap coming undone. And frankly, I'm baffled as to how it wasn't done up in the first place, because here the marshal is very clearly pictured inspecting my helmet strap and seeing that it's fastened properly. So how it came undone is beyond me. However, races don't end until the checkered flag waves, and I've still got a stint left to do. So I rejoin the track with a lot of sour taste in my mouth, and I get to work. My first target here is actually the guy who overtook me the moment I left the pits. I try and find the inside line coming through the Lunar Bend, but that actually means that I lose a lot of ground onto him. But here comes this cart's secret weapon. It's got some fantastic straight line speed, and I am right in this guy's slipstream, which means I close a ridiculous amount of distance straight away, throw it straight down the inside on the second of the S's, and then immediately take that position. I'm not in a great headspace right now though, and as I'm coming through the Joey Dunlop corner, I get a snap of oversteer and lose my patience. Why? Yes! I don't need this right now! Fortunately, when the initial frustration set into resigned anger, I essentially just knuckled down and focused, which meant over the course of a few laps, I closed a ridiculous amount of distance to this guy here. So naturally, I follow him through the lunar bend, and I wait until we get to the Conrad straight before I can do what this cart does best, which is straight line speed to the max. We don't even get fully onto the Conrad straight before I'm coming side by side, and then it's through the second S's part of this circuit. This corner doesn't technically have a name so that's why I keep calling it the second S's but I just wanted something to say to confirm that I have indeed secured that overtake. Who's next? Apparently it's this guy. As I come through the Rogerson Strait and I gain a tremendous amount of ground on him coming through the Lunar Bend, I notice that he's kind of off the racing line. He notices me, leaves the inside open and essentially just lets me straight by, which is kind of useful, but in outdoor carts, especially these, it's usually good to try and get as much slipstream as you can. So this was kind of beneficial yet not beneficial at the same time, but that's not my concern right now anyway. Similarly, this guy on the outside of the Lunar Bend coming into the Comrade Strait sees me, lets me straight through, which was rather convenient at the time given my absolutely scuffed mental state. But after this specific overtake, things get a little bit quiet for me right up until this camera I'm using dies and now we're going to switch points of view. 
Wow. This is my normal GoPro, actually, on a shoulder mount, but I kind of messed up by having the super view angle on, especially with a camera that's mounted to my shoulder, because the super view angle kind of fisheye lenses the whole experience, which means if it's not central, it kind of makes the footage look all distorted and strange like this. Next time I use this camera angle, I'm going to try it without super view on, but it is fortunate to know that three sisters allow a different recording angle that isn't the chest mount because this technically counts as one. Oh, I love loopholes. And now we've got a fight on our hands. I know it's difficult to see, but these two individuals up ahead of me are actually a lot closer than they look, especially the guy on the left who goes wide coming through Joey Dunlop. I almost crash into the back of him here, but I managed to prevent contact, get into his slipstream, immediately find the gap coming through the paddock bend, and now I'm going to chase the guy in the orange helmet just ahead of me. From where we are on the circuit currently, it looks like this is going to be another Conrod straight job, so I follow him straight through the Luna Bend once again, trying to keep my line as steady as possible, surfing a bit of the curb, managing to keep my line slightly tidier than this guy ahead of me. So as we come to the Conrod straight, it's basically before we even hit the straight itself that I'm on the inside line and I can sail straight by. There's two more people ahead of me though, let's see if we can catch those before the flag drops. And again, a few laps later, we're coming through the Lunar Bend as we approach the Comrade Straight once again, and because this cart's insane straight line speed means I have a ridiculous advantage in this scenario, because I've kept my lines nice and clean, I can capitalize on this guy's slipstream, immediately gain a speed boost, and just shoot straight by. There's one more person ahead of me, but I do feel like the flag is going to fall before I'm able to overtake him. But still, it's worth a try. Turns out I was wrong. Continuing my trend of being an unreliable narrator and this car getting an insane amount of overtakes through the Comrod straight, I follow this guy through the Luna Bend one more time. I get straight behind him so I can immediately start capitalizing on Slipstream ready for this big long straight. He notices me, decides not to defend, and I get a fantastic little overtake through the Comrade straight once again. And considering every single overtake has been like this, I think it's about time that we cut this session short and concede the fact that my silly, silly mistake has lost us the podium. My emotions are running high and the reality of my mistake sets in at this moment. Not a single moment has passed since this race ended where I have not internally kicked myself for how this race ended. A charge from the back of the grid into the podium standings, with even a healthy chance for P2 at one point, brought to a grinding halt because of something as simple and silly as a helmet strap coming undone. I hate myself. Fortunately, Luke and John did not collectively separate my head from my neck when I climbed out of the cart, because they were still thrilled with an end result of P4 after the dreadful race start we endured. And honestly, there were more positives to take away from that race than there were negatives. My laps got a lot better in that second stint, and frankly, if we get just one race without all this tomfoolery, I think a podium is absolutely on the cards. Alas? We're just going to have to wait and see. Until next time.